Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My producer here just told me this vest is not happening. It's very shiny and bright. But there's a reason I want to make sure you're up and bright and awakened and alert. So if my teaching gets like really boring, just look at the vest and you'll be like, whoa. Hello, everyone. How are you? We're continuing in our study of 1 John, and we're in chapter 4. And I just want to kind of review the three verses that we read together yesterday. Uh, verses 14 from 1 John chapter 4. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be Savior of the world. So who's the we? That's the apostles, John included. They saw, they heard, that's from the first uh, chapter. Remember what we've seen and heard and touched, we report to you. He sent his son to be savior of the world. Jesus was sent. He existed before he was born from Mary's womb. He was sent by the father to be the savior of the world. I know this is Christianity 101, but let's review it because it's precious, isn't it, to us? God loved the world, so he sent, he gave his son. Jesus was sent on a mission to be the savior of the world. He existed from all eternity, and he gave up the glory and the grandeur of where he existed in ways that we can't totally comprehend the existence of God. But the son was sent and left heaven to come to earth to be the savior. Oh, I pray today that you are listening every day. Do you know him as your savior? We didn't need, if we would have needed help in math, he would have sent a tutor. If we had trouble, our main problem was finance. He would have sent a, um, an advisor, financial advisor. No. The problem of this world is sin. And sin is so serious that only God's only one and only unique son, only begotten son, could be the cure, could be the answer. He came as a savior from our sins. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, among other things, but for sure that, John is saying, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love and whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. And there we have it again and again and again. I mean, John, don't you think we got it yet? God is love. You got to love. If you, God lives in you, you're going to live in love. And love lives in you. Over and over and over. Very important, right? He's introducing to us, to us and reminding us of God's ways. I was reading earlier today from Psalm 103. He revealed, speaking in the Old Testament uh, history there, Psalm 103, he revealed his ways to Moses and his acts to the children of Israel, to the people of Israel. He revealed his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. What does that mean? The people of Israel basically saw his power. They never got into his ways. That's why they grumble so quickly. This is understanding and experiencing God's love in us and understanding his ways, his personality, is much more than just what he does. Like my friend John here, if you watch what he does during the day and just had a video of what he's working, he's here, he's there, he goes home, he comes back, and you know, oh, I know what he does there at the church, but you don't know his ways. You haven't eaten with him, talked, traveled, laughed, prayed. It's different. So the people of Israel, they knew, oh, God can send plagues. Look at all those frogs that he sent on Egypt. Oh, he can open the Red Sea. 
his, his acts of power. But Moses spent time with him. And as we spend time with God in his word, meditate, pray, wait on him, he gives us revelation so we begin to understand his ways. See, if you just know his acts, his acts of power, I believe God created the heavens and earth. I believe he can open the Red Sea, and he did. You could still be meaner than a hornet. Once you understand his ways, kind, he is love. That love is patient. That love is long-suffering. That love is always looking for ways to bless us. That's where you fall in love with the Lord and you want to please him, not out of fear, but out of love, out of wanting to honor him because you've understood his ways, especially his ways toward you. Isn't that a good reminder, maybe, why John is saying this over and over again? These are his ways. His acts, yes, he's creator. He can do anything. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent and all of that. But, ah, to understand his ways. We need revelation as we read the word. Oh, God, show me your ways. You see that in the Psalms. In uh, often where the psalmist cries out, Lord, teach me your ways, or in Psalm 119. Not just teach me facts about you, teach me the inner working of your heart, your character. And that character is summarized by John is God is love. And whoever lives in love lives and they in God. God lives in them, whoever, anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love that God has for us. God is love, whoever lives in love, lives in God and God in them. Are you tired of me saying it? I'm not tired of saying it because I keep reading it in this letter of 1 John. The greatest thing we can do today is love God and love our fellow believers and love the world even as God loved the world. What joy that brings to God's heart as we imitate him living a life of love. Let's do it. Let's not be harsh and mean and critical. Oh God, take that from me and take it from all of us. Oh, I see through that person. Or oh, you're, you're real Sherlock Holmes. Anybody can see through people for the most part, but to love them after you've seen through them. How about this? God sees through all of us and still loves us. Let's do it today in Jesus' name. Amen.